Hi everyone, welcome to a special edition of my Hybrid Platforms Trend Series with myself, Rob Sims, Chief Technologist for CDW. Today we're joined by Neil from Cisco and Darren from Nutanix to talk about taming the complexities of the cloud landscape as we move into the future. So guys, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, Darren, what do you spend your days doing? Yeah, I spend my time with customers and partners. So I'm Darren Woolard, I'm field CTO for UK and Ireland at Nutanix. And it is a daily, uh, with daily excitement that I spend time talking about technology. And we know it's rapidly changing. Um, there's a lot of uh, kind of confusion out there. And I try to help people understand how they can apply that to their business needs uh, in simple terms. And that's uh, pretty much what I enjoy doing. Cool, excellent. And Neil, what do you spend your days getting up to? I have a very similar role to uh, to, to uh, Darren, but I don't have the word word field CTO in my <laughs> title. Uh, my title changes on a daily basis. I'm a solutions engineer with Cisco's uh, cloud and AI infrastructure specialist team, part evangelist, part architect, um, and similar to to Darren, it's about trying to articulate why an organisation should be embarking in a particular direction on why they should come and work with Cisco and Cisco's partners and the broader ecosystem, um, as opposed to necessarily getting down into the kind of the, the weeds of the of the technology decision. What and what's it going to deliver? Not just from a technology perspective, but ultimately from a business outcome perspective. So thanks guys for for the intros. I mean, I think we'll all agree that over the last few years, this cloud word has got really complex. Lots of different opinions, lots of different agendas being driven in the market. We're seeing these random words being thrown in front of the word cloud now to try and make something new, whether it's super cloud, meta cloud, hybrid cloud, adaptive cloud. It's like, it's all a bit of rubbish at the end of the day, effectively, because we're all talking about the same thing under the hood. It's just people trying to drive an agenda. And I think the problem with that is that it provides uh, opportunity for disinformation within the market. It provides opportunity for wrong decision making, which can have a catastrophic effect over you know a longer period of time, et cetera. But I mean, really, what are you guys seeing as the big challenges in the market? So Darren, what I mean, what are you speaking to customers on a daily basis? What are, yeah. what are you hearing? What are they telling you? Yes, uh, so definitely complexity and operational simplicity. I mean, those are things, but I would say there's the big problem is people have made existing investments. So they've decided on a technology, maybe 18 months, two years ago, it's cost a lot of money. They've gone to the board in seeking out approvals, made commitments to how it's gonna support a business. We know IT changes very quickly. And obviously in the past 18 months, we've heard a lot about your AI and all these other things. Business wants to change and they can't with their existing platforms. You speak with us and we can say, well, we can assist you, but so there's a confidence problem kind of internally plus also the impact to people and process. Because you change technology, there's a ripple effect as well. So that makes it very hard. So we see those are the kind of the topics that we have varying discussions around today. No, that makes sense. And I think I totally agree. I think there is always a, a reputational risk for the person that made the decision. It's easy if you're new in, mm. you can counteract because it wasn't my legacy. But if you're part of that, then there's a challenge there. And I think there is a call for people need to be brave and they need to have the hand up and say that the market's changed. I made a really good decision back then, but I need to make a different decision now for the future of this business. And I think that's a that's a element of being really brave yeah. in customers. But Neil, what are, what are the, I mean, you're talking to customers as well on a, on, a, on a regular basis. What are you seeing as them top conversations? So I think I'd like to start by picking up on one piece, and that that's the idea that you know we've made decisions as organizations about where it's appropriate to execute the workloads that make up our applications and we based a lot of that on you know this kind of classical definition of of, of cloud or you know hybrid cloud meta cloud super cloud that we forget that's a 14 year old definition you know and the world has evolved along along the way so yes there is a fear of change it's a reputational change um and and could be quite career limiting but it's the reality of the world that we that we live in. But we can't just run pell-mell towards the next new shiny thing because what that does is that builds operational complexity. So now we've got silos of operations and we still find it in customers where we have, you know, the traditional, if you like, uh, IT infrastructure and ops team. And then over here you have the nice new shiny uh, cloud ops team and kind of never the twain shall meet. And so now you've built two different sets of people. You've built two different sets of tooling, two different sets of capabilities. I think one of the things that 
perhaps the idea of kind of super cloud and, and, and meta cloud and, and all those other things, I like to think of it as just hybrid cloud evolved, is you should try and span your tooling across all of those execution venues because that's the way you're going to drive operational simplicity and that's the way you're going to drive operational risk out of the change that you're going to make. Yeah, no, that makes 100% sense from my perspective as well. And I think we're seeing that all over the place. There's you know, risk, complexity, previous decisions, investments, rapid change. They're all impacts that CIOs are really struggling with on a, on a daily basis. Um, but I think also there's a lack of education and understanding sometimes around what we needed from a platform five years ago and what that platform could deliver are very different from what we need and what it can provide today. So. When I wanted to go to cloud initially, I wanted to enable my developers. I wanted to access platform as a service capabilities. I wanted automation capabilities, et cetera. I wanted speed of scale. I couldn't get that on-prem 10 years ago. It didn't exist. No. So I went to cloud, and that was a perfectly valid reason. Now, all of that stuff is potentially available in private cloud architectures, the stuff we're going to be talking about in this session. Yeah. But if people don't know it exists and don't understand its capabilities, how can they make informed decisions? Yeah. And I think crucially, that's what we wanted to create this series for, is to educate everyone so they can make better decisions about the future of their technology yeah. investments. And I think that's the, the crux of what we're, we're trying to achieve here to, over this series. So guys, thank you, and we'll see you in the following videos. So really, these are the challenges and, and more that we're going to be addressing across this series. How can we take the technology combination of Cisco and Nutanix the delivery and supply capabilities of CDW and help you as customers make a much more strategic choice about how you can tame all of this complexity and challenges in a modern application and delivery platform world. As you can see at the side here, we have an architecture for this and we're gonna talk through this in the following sessions, dive into details about each of the components and also bring to life some customer examples of where we've delivered this and the value that that's brought. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Speak to you soon.